Conversations with God by your host, Psalmist Amethyst Davis. Welcome, welcome everybody to a conversation with God. I am your favorite host, Psalmist Amethyst Davis, and I have in the building with me a guest. I know you guys have seen the flyers floating around, so I'm not going to say her name yet until I give her a bomb introduction as always. But you know how we do it here on A Conversation with God. Before we jump into anything, we're going to go ahead and get into prayer first. So, of course, however you go to God, whether your eyes are closed, your hands are lifted, whatever that looks like to you, um, let's go ahead and give it to God and give it back to Him. Um, So, Father, we just thank you right now for every moment we encounter with you, God, because it is you who allows us to breathe every breath that we take, God. And we are so careful careful to give you the glory. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place right now to sup with us and have your way, God. Have your way in us today. We yield to you as willing vessels, Father, to use as you see fit. Father, we ask that you bless the hearers of this station today and that you allow something that's said on it to open their hearts to receive you, God, to be encouraged, and to give thanks for your son, Jesus. It is in your precious, matchless name that we pray, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And without further ado, let's get into this introduction. My guest is a psalmist, musician, recording artist, minister, servant, and leader. And I love the word servant because you can't do nothing unless you're a servant. (laughs) And she um, has served as the ministry and capacity in the ministry capacity for over two thirds of her life. Ministry has um, ministry has her ministry. She has served in the ministry in various congregations, excuse me, such as Eagles Nest and Huntsville, Alabama, under the leadership of Bishop Daniel Richardson and Greater Travelers Rest, BKA House of Hope, love the name, um, in Atlanta, Georgia, under the leadership of Dr. Um, E. Hewley Dewey Smith. Sorry, Dr. E. Dewey Smith. She graduated from Huntsville, Alabama, A, Alabama A&M, um, and her passion for ministry and music was nurtured by family, 
um, of musicians and a loving community, which provided her opportunities before she was a teenager. She currently serves as the director of student ministries and worship at the historic St. Bartley PB Church under the leadership of Pastor James Mooney, where she utilizes her gifts and experience for the glory of God. She has recorded as a background vocalist on 13 albums, y'all. She's released her own debut album entitled Forever in September of 2020. Help me give it up for my guest, Tiffany Sledge, (laughs) y'all. Tiffany, that is an extensive bio, and I am so excited. Let me just take the time right now to thank you for taking time out of your busy day um, to speak with us. And thank you to all the listeners, for everyone who's tuned in, who will tune in later. Thank you so much for your support. Um, We are so glad to have you here. So I want to talk a little bit about my history with you. So um, do you remember the first time we actually met? <laughs> so the first time I actually met you was through Lincoya. So oh. you used to play with Lincoya. We came to your house for some rehearsals. Um, <laughs> and I, I have seen um, some of your work. I, I know that you've worked with um, a couple artists, uh, Jamel Strong. Um and then I know that you've done some things, choir directing and things like that. So, yeah. Um, and Charles, um, he has bragged on how instrumental you were in his um, skills as a musician. And so um, I had already had you on the roster, but he had said, hey, call Tiffany because Tiffany is amazing as a recording artist. And I'm like, yeah, she she definitely is. He's like, she's amazing worshiper. And I said, yeah, I've seen some of her stuff. So um, that's my encounter with you. And every encounter that I had, um, Charles was definitely right. You are an amazing worshiper. And so that's why I'm so excited to have you here today and just talk about your journey. Um, <laughs> so the first thing we're going to get into, because y'all, have y'all seen Tiffany's Facebook page Wait. with Izzy? <laughs> so we, we, I'm just going to go and get this out the way. <laughs> I'm going to have to get this out the way. So Izzy, talk to me about Izzy and the praising dog. Where did this come from? How did this start? It's hilarious. So, Izzy is, first of all, that's my baby. Give me my baby. <laughs> um, but the funny thing about this, so that song is like one of my, it is my alarm. So, mm-hmm. uh, so this is the song that plays when, you know, <laughs> one morning, the alarm goes off and she does that. And I'm like, that is so weird, you know. Didn't really think anything of it. Came back around, like, and so every morning, like, it's so bad to the point now where as soon as I hear ding, like, I'm pressing stop. So, <laughs> um, but the really, really funny thing about it, you can play any type of music. She's not doing it. It's that song only. Like, wow. I don't know, and like, even in the car, if that song. If, if, if there's a rotation going in that that's mm-hmm. place, she's like riding him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the only song, so yeah, very interesting. It was so funny because I told my mom, I said, you know what? Because when I do my research, I, I dig in for y'all. So <laughs> and so I was telling my mom, I said, you have got to see this dog singing. And she, I was like on cue, like literally praising. But then the other part was the dancing, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm telling y'all, go back and look at Tiffany's Facebook. She was like, pick them up and put them down. So what really got me was it, it wasn't so much the dancing as it was that she said, you remember what I said, as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. And Izzy like shook her head. Like, I don't remember this conversation had me hollering. <laughs> I love it. So you know what? It it doesn't matter if it's an animal, um, if it's us, 
we need somebody gonna have to praise him or the rocks gonna crowd. So we right. don't need that. So I love it. Thank you for sharing that story with us, Tiffany. So I want to talk a little bit about your bio because you talked about recording um, background. And like I said, I know you did some things from Jamel Strong. Shout out to Jamel Strong. Um, love, love, love his ministry. Um, so yeah, talk to us about some of the artists that you've um, sung background for. Um, so I have an opportunity to do um, a few things here in of course, like the North Alabama area or whatever. Um, and so a few of those people, I'm trying to think, I think I, I saw Steven um, log in. And so I actually used to used to uh, sing with Steven. I'm not sure that we did. I'm not sure that we fin- I finished recording with him, but I've done some things um, with Oakwood. I've done some okay. things with Matt. Um, of course, I've recorded for Jamil some years ago. And so um, I'm trying to think of some others. I, I should have stuff in front of me because my mind is so bad. It's um, all good. Oh, so there was this, there was this album, um, When Pastors Meet. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can never forget that, that particular album because that was probably like one of my first times like in the studio ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm in the studio with older people who have experience. Mm-hmm. Like, and this was the opportunity. I, I would tell the world this to this day. Um, Johnny Sledge, um, he took a chance on me before I was getting any calls to really do anything. Um, Johnny Sledge was the person calling, making like a chance, chance on me. And so when people ask, like, how did your journey get started? Like, where did you get connected? How? I tell people, like, it wasn't because I was so great, because I was terrible. I didn't know anything about singing in the studio, but it was Johnny who called um, and just kind of kept me connected and was like, here are some people to be around um, to help nurture this gift is what I really felt, you know, that it was. And he just kind of put me on. So I did a lot of, actually a lot of my recording work for background for his artists. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a big, big, big part of my um, journey. Nice. So I know that you've done some work also um, with Jamil. We talked about Jamil. How is it working with Jamil? Jamil is cool people. Like, I love he him. look laid back. <laughs> um, Jamil is about business. He's about ministry. Um, and I think the thing that I love about singing with that group of people, um, it, it was all, it's always an outlet. I think the people that um, I got the opportunity to minister with, with Jamel, we were all at different churches mm-hmm. together to be in the background. Wow. It was much fun and refreshing. Right. You know? So those experiences with, with Jamel were um, amazing. So let's talk about the James Fortune link up. How did that all come into play? So, um, Actually, Pastor Candy, um, Pastor Candy called me um, about that. I think his singers, um, there was a, like a schedule conflict, and they couldn't make it to Huntsville in time for the praise of the yeah, praise of the part. They couldn't make it to Huntsville in time for that. I think only one singer would be here. And so she reached out and asked if I would do it. Um, and I, of course, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was super exciting, but probably like the one of the most stressful things ever. Um, because literally it wasn't, I don't think we had music for 24 hours. And right. so James Fortune, like, it's one thing to listen to his music. It's another thing to have to learn his music. So really intricate part. Um, and I was so stressed out the night before because I, I can be, I can be a perfectionist. I'm like, I want to have a right. Yeah. I wanna have a right. And I remember calling, um, Imani, she also sang, and we were like, I don't know if we're going to make it through this, <laughs> you know, remembering words, remembering parts, having stage presence, all of that, but it was a, it was an amazing weekend, and yes, Pastor Candy was the one who connected, connected me, um, I love it, I love it, so if you had to, um, choose, um, what has been your best experience or your most um, gratifying moment in ministry, period? What would you say that would be? And this is, we're 
singing, preaching ministry. Just Either singing. one, because so, I know you do a lot. So out of all of it, what has been the most gratifying for you, whether that's singing, ministering, um, being a recording artist? So I would say, um, to answer that, I would have to say, um, number one at the top of that list is probably preaching uh, my initial sermon. Um, I ran from that for 10 years, um, and even my yes to the Lord was like a whole bunch of fear, you know, but Lord, I'm telling you yes, and I'm not, I don't like being up in front of people, like I've over, over time and with, you know, different opportunities um, that, that the Lord has allowed for me to have. I'm becoming just a tad bit more comfortable, but I, I love being, you know, behind the scenes. Um, I'll sing background all day. I'll, I'll sit behind the keyboard, um, but I did not want to stand in front of people. Like, that was that was just literally the biggest fear for me. I feel like I, I would hear the Lord's voice. I feel like the Lord spoke to me, but it was just something about having to solely trust him and rely on him. Oof, yeah. And, you know, every moment after, you know, when you stand to minister, it's just something about having to stand there. And um, and I remember, I remember, like, sitting down. I remember getting home that night, and I just couldn't sleep. I was yeah. feeling, like, on such a high. And so that's probably one, been one of the greatest um, moments. I'll also say, too, in worship, in, in, yeah, in leading worship and leading a team, it's also great when people, when you're called to lead them and you're called to help pull them forward and into whatever yes. ministry, um, when they come back and say, you know, a lot of times, you know, just like for instance in rehearsal, you know, you're encouraging people to to worship and you're you know you're encouraging people hey let's sing it this way let's sing it this way right. uh, that's not always received no. you know um as a leader you know leading people sometimes isn't always easy mm -hmm. but i've had people come to say thank you for pulling me thank you for pushing me mm -hmm. um it's been under your ministry or under your leadership where i've grown you know i look at music ministry different i don't just stand up here and sing anymore, but I love what yeah. I do. I love who I do it for. And so those moments, I never forget it. I love that. And you said a lot of key things, which is kind of a segue. So as far as ministry, is this something that um, you feel like you're being called to eventually at some point pastor? Or do you feel like this Am I, <laughs> um, or do you feel like that maybe um, it's, it's just a ministering platform as far as like teaching um, the word of God to people and just um, soaking in that moment, any future in pastoring? Um, yeah, I don't see it. Um. <laughs> a lot of people say that now, but then, <laughs> then that call come and it's like, hello, Lord. Pastor thing, like I just, I don't see it. I don't feel it. I'm praying, you know, that God ain't just say what He wants. <laughs> but I just don't necessarily feel like I'm called to that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a decade from now, God may be saying something totally different. I hope not, but I just really, <laughs> I don't necessarily feel called to to that. So. Gotcha. So strictly the ministering part and teaching form is where you want to stay unless the Lord calls you and you answer yes. Um, and, and I ain't going to push you over there. I ain't push you over there. Um, but worship. So talk to me about the worship part of it. Where do you see yourself going um, in the future of worship? You know, recently, I'm not gonna say from day to day, but maybe from month to month, from recently, this 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 or, and so there was a season of like, I did not see myself doing anything but music ministry. Okay, and I am never getting up from this, never not singing. I'm never not, you know. It's a season where 
I feel like that was it. That was what I was talking to, and you know that 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 is my journey. That is my complete journey in ministry. Um, but the older I get, the more God is stretching. Um, I feel that at some point He may be pulling me. You know, I don't know when that is. I mean, I can't say that. You know, I, I was over um, music ministry. You know, in the next two, three years, I can't right. say. Right. You know, but I do not necessarily see it as I gotta be doing this. This is the only thing that right. can but there are other things that I've been able to do in ministry that um I feel fulfilled in. You know, um like I enjoy outside of like just ministry, Sunday morning, those type of things, like I enjoy the day to day operations of the church. You know, all of that um the functions. Yeah, the functions like um, that administrative, like, so I do enjoy, um, all of that. I don't know where God is leading me. I don't know what the next couple of years is like, and so it's kind of hard for me to answer that, mm-hmm. but I do think that from maybe 10 years ago to this point, I'm not as strong on, I have to be in music ministry. Now, I probably, I, I may have to be like, oh, I, I need to grab a mic every now and then. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just, I don't know the details. Yeah, and that's hard to say, too. I, I know that that's a, a hard question to answer because when you're a worshiper, you it's on the inside of you. So it's not like you can just put it down and not pick it back up. I mean, whether it's behind a mic or if you're just going to be doing it all around your house like you do and, you know, yeah. just, you know, for other people. But, yeah, it, it's really hard to just put that down when, when you that is you and you are it. So yeah. um, I love that answer. So if it was someone that you could work with, and that's anybody, um, whether it be professional, who would you choose and why would you choose that person? Um, when I think, um, when I think like just background, to say um, background as a background singer, mm-hmm. if I could work for Donna Lawrence, that would. That's a good one. Make my day. And there are some people, you know, um, when I think like background, background arrangements and things like that, you know, you have you have your James Fortune, you have um, Kirk Franklin, but at the top of my list, like I would I would enjoy all of that, but at the top of my list is Donald Lawrence. Like I, I Donald. <laughs> um, I just I've seen I first of all I've seen him um in some clips that kind of you know. Mm-hmm. Um, with our, you know, seeing him work with his team, mm-hmm. I'm exhausted in it. You know, I can I'm, definitely see that. Yeah, I can I'm, definitely see that link. <laughs> I, I love, I love the way he writes. I love his arrangements. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be the person for me. That's a good link. That is definitely a good link. Um, if you had the choice. To choose one or the other, what what choice would you choose? If you could just do the one thing for the rest of your life, what would you choose and why? And we're talking music. Ministry. Any of your any of your gifts, because you have a lot. I mean, I think for me, it's it's, it's preaching ministry. It's preaching. I think it's preaching ministry. I love it. I love it. So why would you choose the preaching over the worship? What's what's different there for you that um, has your heart more toward the preaching? Um, I think my journey to preaching has a lot to do with it. It was a lot of pushback. Um, me and God had a whole bunch of difficult conversations. Um, and not that I don't allow God to use me in in worship because in, in, you know I'm yielded to Him. God use me. You I, move me out of the way. This is not about me. Your agenda, your agenda alone. And so I always stand um, and leaning on Him to do whatever He wants yeah. to do through me. Um, but I think even before I was. Even before that was my thought process, even before I stood to minister in that way, I think singing was just kind of a natural gift, Mm -hmm. like kind of something that I've just kind of always done. Um, I think preaching, though, 
it is that one thing like I can't do it by myself. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like there's just I just can't. Like I and I it was it, there's such it's such an amazing feeling to just say to know that yeah. to be able to mm-hmm. to be able to recognize that and then say God I trust you. I fully trust you with this. Kid. Yeah. Like, I, I cannot do this. I ain't got nothing to say on my own. I can't stand before you people on my own. And um, to see lives transformed, um, to hear people, uh, um, I spoke to a lady a couple days ago, um, and she told me, it was a sermon I preached at the end of last year, and she remembered the sermon title after I had, like, kind of flipped my mind. Mm-hmm. And, she back and she was like, I received the word, I declared it over my life. And God answered the prayer, you know. And so those, you just, for me, it is, it is just kind of being in a position to be used by God and knowing I can't put it in my own strength. And yeah. so it can just see lives transform um, in, in whatever way they may look. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, that's amazing because, you know, it's a different um, capacity um, from worship because in worship you're leading people um, and it's your heart that you know of God to other people you're sharing your heart um, with other people and you're bringing them into that worship whereas when you're ministering to people um, you're having to you know deal with God you need to download this in me so that I make sure I minister it effectively so that when someone hears it that they're able to receive it and then they can take it and run with it. So it is a different capacity and it's amazing that you said you picked that one out of worship because I was sure you were going to talk about worship or either teaching like music, something musical there, because like you said, that is um, amazing when you can touch the hearts of God's people um, through ministering his word and people can remember that because some people don't remember what, what was said today yeah. on Sunday. And so when it pricks your heart so deep that you can remember and call back and say, hey, this um, that, the, that the Lord used you to say changed my life. Yeah. I applied it and it actually worked. God answered my prayer is an amazing thing to happen. So that's, that's amazing to say that. Um, yes, we're, we're praying that you can walk into that fluently. I know that you said, you know, you're still trembling there, but at the end of the day, that's how we know that it's not us and it's God. And that's where he wants us to be anyway. Um, I can do nothing apart from God. And I tell him that not, you know, even with my natural stuff, sometimes I'll be struggling like, Lord, (laughs) Oh, what just happened? Like, You know, and I have bloopers, so I need them in every single area of my life. And and I love that you said that that I need him in this area because I can't do this by myself. And so that's really our message is that we can't do it alone. We can't do it by um, by ourselves. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need God's help. We, We need him to come in and give us the instructions to be able to do it. So thank you for saying that. Um, next thing is, do you mind sharing some tricks and tips for worship? What is it that's been successful for you for, um, engaging? Because, you know, sometimes you, as a worshiper, I have looked in the crowd and, you know, they always say, don't look at nobody. Cause when you look at somebody, it's like, okay, that focus is gone. Cause they look like either they're not there or something is going on and they're just not attentive. What is it that has been successful for you that has been able to draw those into worship with you? Um, the first thing I would say, and these are these are tips that sometimes I remember, you know, apply. Sometimes I'm like, sometimes I'm like, you, what, what's going on? Um, <laughs> but, um, no, um, oftentimes I think and I'm speaking for experience, I've missed it because I want to get up and minister the song that has, has ministered to me. Mm-hmm. I want to minister the song that has blessed me. And sometimes that just doesn't connect with the audience. Yeah. Depending on what church you're at, what type of denomination, 
um, you just have to be mindful of what people can open up for this. Yeah. Um, you know, I think churches are, you know, shifting and, and, but sometimes like just say, you know, that straight CCM sometimes doesn't work in our, yeah. our, you know, Baptist churches, you know, absolutely. Yep. And, and we can't go to, you know, certain churches and have you tried. We can't right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> Cause they'll be like, what? <laughs> Just being mindful of what what's best for them. Now, I do believe in um, trying to pull people along because I feel like there's such a deep place of worship, and oftentimes we've only tapped the surface on Sunday yeah. morning. Um, and so I I would love to see you know our congregations um, engage more in what worship really is. Yeah. It is, you know, we're here to glorify God. We're here to magnify God. This song points straight to heaven, yeah. you know. But oftentimes we have to, and I'm not, I'm not close to these, these type of songs at all, but, you know, sometimes it is we we get caught up in the cycle of of singing songs that we know people are just going to connect to. Yeah. And honestly, as a worship leader, I mean, it's a hard spot to be in. But it is, yeah. There's a time where we have to have the courage. We've got to be able to stand and say, "This is what I'm called to." Mm-hmm. And no matter the places, you know, no matter how many people stand, no matter no matter how many people lift their hands, um, no matter how many, you know, no matter what, um, still gotta go for it. Yeah. yeah. And so, my first thing would be to know your audience and be able to connect with them song wise. Um. I think staying positive in the moment has really, really um, helped me. It is, like you said, it's hard to sometimes look out at the faces. Mm -hmm. Um, But also understanding that that from generation to generation. Yeah. Like, some people are, some people want to connect, they just don't know how. How, right. You know, like, praise and worship is, is new. My grandpa... If if I was singing in front of my granddad every week, he would support me because, you know, I'm his baby. Right. But yeah. <laughs> we could say, you know, to how great is our God. Like it's right. not. You know, and so, um, keeping those type of things in mind when you're standing and leading people, you know, um, and, and staying positive and remaining pleasant. This is something that I'm still really, really working on. Um, sometimes I get really tense. My nerves get the best of me and so I don't look like I enjoy what I'm doing sometimes yeah Although I really do. yeah like I really enjoy it but it's the nerves I'm looking at you know are they liking the song you know stuff like that and so like I would say you know of course know your audience um stay positive um be spiritual um I think for a lot of people who sing it's just easy to get up and just sing yeah but music ministry is also ministry. Yes. And so a lot of times, I'm not going to say a lot of times, but in some cases and in seasons of my life, this has been this is my food. Mm-hmm. To disconnect with the people is because there's a disconnect here. Yes, that's good, Tiff. So I'm not, I have been prayed up. I haven't been fasting. I haven't been yeah. eating my food yeah, I need to. And so... Vertically, if I'm not in position to receive what God has for me and to be able to pour out to his people, I ain't got nothing to receive. You yeah, know, that's so good. That, that would be that's probably number one. You know, know your audience, you know, stay positive, all of that stuff, but remain spiritual, be in position for what you know, for God to pour into you so that you can minister effectively to his people is number one. Definitely. Stay connected. I love it. Because what you said is definitely number one and key because oftentimes we, we may set a song and, you know, I've noticed this sometimes that we could set a song because we say, Hey, we're going to practice this song and we're going to go over this song. But the Holy spirit may say, Hey, I need you to do this. If we're not connected and in tune, like you said, we'll miss it. And then we missed that opportunity. And so that is, has been important 
Um, and what I'm noticing is just hearing the voice of God. If he says go a different way, just because it's something that you've rehearsed, go that different way. Um, and like I said, it's the age gap, the generation gap from generation to generation. Um, they grew up coming on the rough side of the mountain and a lot of the older people like to hear those types of things. And where as our younger generation and our millennials, they want to hear, like, like you said, the James fortune, the, um, Kirk Franklin, the Donald Lawrence, they want the Todd Trebet. They want to hear those artists, um, because it connects with them. So right. we have to be in tune to be able to know what to um, minister in song because it's not just singing. And you're right. A lot um, of us are just singing. And, you know, you you know when you're uncomfortable, sometimes people can also see that you're uncomfortable. And so that's also a block for ministry. Um, and what you said was absolutely key for worshiping, that's the first thing that you need to check is that your relationship with God is right, that you're connected to the Father because he's the one that's going to download into you to allow you to be able to minister in the way that will reach the hearts of his people. So I love it. I love it. Um, we talked about community in your bio. How do you feel that you have um, influenced or encouraged your community through the work that you've done throughout all of the ministry? Um, I, um, how would I answer this? I think, um, so I, well, this is not my mistake. I think, I think I was able to through influence, connect with um, a lot of people. Um, you meet, you know, when you when you sit when you're at the church for quite some time, like which that's home. And so I didn't leave home until I was back. So I played there for fifteen years. And so um, I think one of the things was um, being able to connect with people who were, you know, in and out or, you know, we have special events or whatever, being able to connect and being able to have relationships, build relationships outside of that. And so, um, and that's just not, you know, those are just not relationships, you know, or connections um, from Eagle Sense, but just all around. And so I think just being able to, um, from church to church, from ministry from ministry to ministry, from group to group, connecting with other, other believers, and keeping the main thing the main thing, which right. is glorifying God. And so I think I've been able to do that with, you know, several different people. And so we haven't necessarily been just about um, but you know, from group to group, different mm -hmm. and so I think for me, um that would be that would be I think my connection to um being connected to others um in that way, in the way we um you Right. Well, thank you for saying that. And I would say this too, as an impact from what I've seen, um, you've impacted others. You have a lot of people who support you and that is great to have a, a great support system because it encourages you to keep going. Um, it lets you know that you are on the right track, but it also gives you a sense of belonging to know that, Hey, what I'm doing has purpose. Yeah. And I'm in the right place. So you have impacted the community through your ministry of music, through your ministry of um, preaching, um, or should we say teaching. Um, <laughs> to me, they're the same thing. <laughs> One just has a different title, but it's the same thing. And so even being a choir director, um, you know, directing choirs and things like that, you have impacted people's lives because music is something that heals our soul. And so when you're teaching parts or when, you know, you're putting a song together and you're creative, um, Tiffany, so um, you have the ability to hear um, a different note in a song. I've heard some things that you've done on your page um, and how you've changed, um, you know, not the lyrics, but you've changed the tone of the song and it had a whole different meaning. So you have impacted, um, the community. Um, I've been impacted just by listening to, um, you and, and Tiffany is, um, she's really funny. 
Um, just in case you guys didn't know, and if you do know, she is real funny, which is why I wanted her to come on. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about one other call out that I've seen on her page. So if you haven't seen the Here Comes the Bride <laughs> with the huge bouquet, that right there took me out. <laughs> so... <laughs> Are we um, practicing for something coming up in the future, or are we still waiting? Make perfect, right? Um, so, um, we are, it's complicated, that's all man. Okay, okay, okay. But it's in the works somewhere. It's in the works somewhere. It's in the works, yeah. Ah, uh, amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into a break. You okay. guys stay tuned. Do not touch your dial. We're going to jump right into Tiffany's song forever, y'all. I have been praising on this song. This song has been out since 2020. It's new to me, so I'm I'm wearing it out, Tiffany. I'm wearing it out. So stay tuned. We're going to jump into Forever by Tiffany. Forever and ever, He is worthy to be praised. Oh, yeah. I to Forever and ever, He is worthy. I will lift my voice and praise. Oh, oh, oh. I will sing to Forever and ever, He is worthy. I'm gonna give And his truth endureth to all generations. He is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth.
Tiffany with Forever. Talk to us, Tiffany, about this song. This song is so amazing. What inspired the lyrics? What were you thinking when you were um, creating this song? Talk to us about Forever. Okay, so Forever, Forever. Um, <laughs> it out. So, um, we released it in 2020, but that song was from like 2009. Wow. Um, I was I was sitting with me and my brother went together, and we used to be like, let's write, let's write. Like, you know, I don't know if you know, like my brother, like he he really writes. I've uh, heard. I play like, <laughs> I don't, I don't write oh, at all, but he really writes. Um, and so we would just kind of sit down, and and so that was something came to mind. So I came up with the first part. Um. And even this version of it, we've taken a lot out of it um, because when we were getting ready to finally put it down, so again, this is years and years of sitting on it, and we're finally getting ready to put it down, it's a tad, it's a tad bit dated, mm -hmm. you know. And so Darius C, shout out to Darius, um, I think he was on here earlier, but anyway, shout out to Darius. Darius, um, we were sitting, me and my brother, Darius, I don't feel like somebody else was in the room. And we were, like trying to make sense of the song, mm -hmm. and because I'm not sure exactly how long the song is, but it was like double the time. And then it's like you got to cut this down. <laughs> it's just too long of a song. I had all kind of scripture in the song. It was just like, you know, <laughs> you're just gonna put it all in there. Just yeah. <laughs> a little here, a little there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you got to just like nobody gonna play it on the radio. <laughs> And so it's still a long song, but pro I promise you we cut a lot out, um, lot out of it. Um, but again, like this is um, 2008, 2009, somewhere, somewhere around that time. And then my brother is sitting down writing, and the song never left me. And I have maybe like two or three more. I dare you to one. So I have like two or three more songs like um, that I've kind of been sitting on. But I gotta be honest with you, the whole artist thing, I just I wanted to I wanted to put out. A song, you know, I don't even really have a desire to put out an album or anything else. Um, I I do love singing, but and a lot of people ask me, "Do you want to be an artist? Do you want to? Mm -hmm. Do you want? Do you want?" To? I really don't. What I feel like I'm called to, and where I feel that I'm most effective, is in the local church, like week to week praise and worship. I love you know? that. Like that's where that's it for me, and so a lot of people. You know, um, we're kind of like fucking at me. Like, you didn't push your song. You should have done this. You should have done this. And I was like, I wanted to get music out because it was a goal of mine. Right. Um, but, you know, my reason was for, I hope somebody hears this and is blessed by it. And that was like really my sole purpose for it. Um, it wasn't, you know, I'm like, if it gets in the right hands, if it gets radio play, great. But when I tell you I didn't really push for any of that, you know, um, and so, like I said, I will say my brother played a very, very huge part in that. And even in the other few songs that I have, he played a huge part in, you know, um, in the process. And like I said, then Darius as well. And so that's how um, Forever came, came about. I love it. I love it. So you had answered my next question, which was going to be, did you plan on doing anything in the future um, with as a recording artist? So what are you doing now? Um, I'm in ministry now. I am at St. Bartley Church under the leadership of Pastor James Mooney, and I am um, the director of student ministries and worship. And so I lead our student ministry department as well as our, our worship team. And um, I mean, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm loving this season. I'm loving where I am in ministry. Um, whatever God has next, I, I, um, I'm going to follow him forward. Um, if this goes like it normally goes, I'm going to have a lot of conversations with God. Can, <laughs> move me right now. I'm a creature of habit. I don't like change. Um, I don't like, I like to really do like to be settled. Um, but I am trying to be obedient to God. Um, and I want to be, at the end of the day, I want to be in the will of God. And so, um, yeah, I don't, I really don't. Yeah. So the whole artist thing. Yeah, and so where I am now is what I'm enjoying most in, in the season. So. 
Absolutely. Well, I do want to talk because we have about four minutes um, before we jump off. Just wanted to talk to you about, um, you mentioned conversations with God. So what conversations with God have you had um, in the times when you felt like you were ready to give up or you felt like you um, God had left and he wasn't there? What was the testimony? Because what I like to hear is what you learned behind that. Um, even in that moment, what did you learn behind that? What's the testimony behind that? Um, I would say for me, in times of transition, Mm -hmm. times of transition are hard for me. Um, I think I, I grew up and I was ready to, you get to where you get set on, you stay planted, you know, all of that. And I think for what God has called me to, um, for the people that he's called me to reach, sometimes that requires doing something different. Sometimes that requires moving sometimes. And so I can remember um, leaving Huntsville, moving to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And that was a really difficult time. So I'm leaving my family. I'm leaving the church I've been at for 30 years. Um, And... A part of me, I knew, I knew I had to. I got to the point where I've got to go. Yeah. I, I did not know that it was going, it was going to only be for a season. I thought I was moving to Atlanta. You couldn't tell me, you know, I would be back. Like when I packed up, I packed up because again, I'm trying to be planned. I'm trying to be, you know. Yeah, I'm a I, planner too. Yeah. <laughs> so you can tell me I would be coming back, and especially as soon as I did. Um, <clears throat> but seasons of transition. I really have to have difficult, I really have, like, really difficult conversations with God. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just thought about something. Um, I think last year, last year around this time, Good Friday, um, I did a seven last words on sermon. And I preached a sermon from My God, My God, Why Have You Forsaken Me? Mm -hmm. And the sermon was Difficult Questions in Darkness. Wow. And I often think about I've gotten to that place when seasons get dark. Mm-hmm. I'm having difficult conversations with God. Yeah, it's it's it's. I'm, I'm I'm asking God those difficult questions because I trust His word, but in the moment it don't feel good. Right. You know? <laughs> and he's got my next lined up. He's yeah. got my future lined up. I trust that, but in the moment. For me, it doesn't feel good. As spiritual as right. I want to be, it, it just doesn't feel good. And so I think every season, every dark season, every season of transition that he's brought me through, you know, I can look back and say, I'm so glad I trusted God in that. Mm-hmm. Since at the time, um, I had to pray my way through. If I'm honest, some seasons I just sit and I wait on God because I just didn't feel like praying. I didn't feel like worshiping. I didn't feel like, you know, because there have been some seasons just that dark. There have been some seasons of transition that just that difficult. Um, but coming out of it and looking back, I'm, I'm grateful that I just didn't turn my back on God. Amen. Yeah, I hope we hear for honest conversation. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's what it's about. Life gets hard, and people don't want to talk about how difficult life life gets, even for those of us in ministry. You know, people will want to put on you that um, because you're in ministry, because you do this, because you that you got it all together, and yeah, don't be fooled by Facebook and Instagram and all of you out here. Don't, don't, don't be fooled by it. I've seen some dark seasons. Yeah. Um, but like I said, God has brought me, God has brought me out of it. Um, and I can always look back and say, I'm so grateful that even when I want to turn my back, that God kept me, that he kept my mind, that he kept me in a place of, you know, even if I wasn't praying my way through it, worshiping my way through it, that he kept me to the point that he, I mean, and God can always bring us back, you know, from whatever. Um, but I'm just glad that he kept me in the way that he did. I just said that. Right. So um, we, we have um, another break really quick. Okay. And I'm going to get into 
Pastor Kelsey's Be Just Fine because you guys got to know that no matter what we go through, it's going to be just fine. We'll be right back with Tiffany Sledge. Don't touch the dial. We'll be right back in a moment. You'll be fine. You're going to be just fine. I know life hits you from every way. So you must tell yourself every day you're going to be just fine. You'll be just fine. Be just fine. You're going to be just fine. Be just fine. You'll be just fine. Be just fine. You're gonna be just fine. Be just fine. I know life hits you from every way. So you must tell yourself every day you're gonna be just fine. Be just fine. Hey, it'll work out fine. Work out fine. It's gonna work. yourself every single day that you're gonna be just fine even if you have to tell yourself over and over again <laughs> all right y'all we are back with tiffany sledge in the building she has blessed us with some jewels um, and some nuggets on how to be a worship an effective worshiper um, she's talked about her journey with christ um, and so Tiffany, um, I want to take this moment because this is really what this whole, um, platform is about is just lifting high the name of Jesus so that he can draw all men unto him. And so I, I, I want to extend an invitation, um, to Christ. Um, so if you'll go ahead and do that for us, um, and then we'll, um, wrap it up. Okay. Um, 
And so for those of you listening, for those of you who may catch this uh, replay, um, something I tell, tell the students um, at the church they made this decision is it's really simple, but connecting with God, giving your life to God is the best decision you'll ever make. Yes. It's by far the best decision that you'll ever make in your entire life. Doesn't mean that it doesn't come with ups and downs because it does. But when you have a savior, when you have, have someone who is the keeper of your mind, your soul, yes. um, this is the best decision that um, you could ever make. I want to talk specifically, you know, because of the platform that we're on specifically, you know, to, to musicians and those of you in ministry. Um, many of us, you know, we, we, we gave our life to Christ years ago when we were younger, and we pour out, and we pour out, and we pour out. I've been the one sitting at the keyboard during altar calls, playing for hours at an altar call while everybody else was getting their deliverance, and I went homebound. I'm getting off the keyboard, I'm walking to my car, I'm driving home, my Sunday best, and I'm getting up and crying because in a dark place, I'm depressed. I'm speaking to you today because years and years of serving in ministry doesn't necessarily mean that we have strong relationships with God. And so you may not know Jesus as your Savior. I want to offer Christ to you. We can connect and, you know, we can get you connected to a church. But for those of us saints who have been in church for a long time and especially mm -hmm. serving in ministry and you feel empty and feel like you don't have anything left, this is also an opportunity for you to reconnect to God. Yeah. I know what it's like to be running on empty. I did years of that. Um, but I also know a different season, being plugged in, being connected, allowing God to restore, revive me so that I can be more effective for the people that put in my path to reach. Mm -hmm. And so, again, for those who may not know Jesus, we want you to get to know him. It's going to be the best decision you'll ever make yes. for your life. For those of you who need to reconnect and renew a restoration for your life, I want to encourage you to reconnect on this evening. Amen. Tiffany, that is something that you said. It's so pivotal because I literally said the same thing today because mm -hmm. I had made um, just a quick testimony. I had made a vow to God for some years. I said, God, I'm going to get up like I used to at five o'clock and I, I'm going to, I'm going to sit at your feet. I'm, I'm going to read. I'm going to hear your voice. I'm going to listen. I need you to pour back on back in me because I've been pouring from an empty vessel. I've been giving everything that I had to everyone for everything doing, whether it was ministry, family, you know, friends, you know, kids, I have just been literally pouring out of an empty vessel. And I felt like, God, what's happening? Like, why do I feel disconnected? Yeah. And it was like I was going to church every Sunday. I was doing worship every Sunday. And I was, I mean, I was reading. I don't even think I was really retaining what I was reading because I was like, I got to get it in so I can say I did it. Yep. And so what you said for the ones, and I say this too, what you said for the ones who have already, you know, been saved and been serving for years, um, just because you're on a board, just because you are a pastor, just because you are a deacon, just because you are a minister, um, just because you are a, a praise and worshiper, just because you are a musician, Whatever the role is, it doesn't mean that you are not to be replenished because um, we do need that replenishing. Um, for me, I can say that was my prayer. I said to the Lord, I don't want to be back the way I was before. I want to be even better. So I need you to put me in a space where I'm not just making requests, just throwing up prayers to you that I'm making requests, but that I'm hearing your voice. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's a two way relationship. It's not us talk to God and tell him everything that's going on and then not listen for him to tell us how to be delivered or how to be set free from depression, um, stress, anxiety, worry. Those are the things that people are dealing with so much now with the pandemic. 
you know, it, it's it's been happening before the pandemic, but people are now just talking about it because it's more magnified now because of the pandemic. And so it's so key and vital. Um, as Tiffany said, he is a savior that heals. He is a savior that delivers. And it is going to be the best decision in your life. And no, the walk is not going to be easy, but that burden will be light because you have the person who is the burden bearer on your side. Um, our message today in church was, you know, really just being on Jesus team, um, him allowing us to do things um, and, and us knowing that it's not we ourselves, but that it is him because <laughs> we're not even capable of doing it. And so, you know, again, this is why the platform is so important to me. I always tell people when they be like, I'm going to listen to your podcast. I'm like, this is not mine. This is the Lord podcast because he's the one who actually, when I say he constructed every piece of this, he put the people in place so that it could be effective, so that it could be what it is. And for every question, everything that he gives me, he gives it to me specific for the artist or for the person that's being interviewed. So, you know, again, Tiffany, I want to take the time to thank you so much um, for the invitation um, for um, a call to Christ and for reconnecting for also just taking time out of your day to even talk to us. I'm, I'm so humbled and thankful for the opportunity to be able to speak with you. It's been a pleasure. Glad to hear that you're back in Huntsville. Are you here to stay? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just back for a little while. Yeah. I mean, I've actually been back. Um, this is, this month is your first month. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I'm I'm here for for a while, but I don't know what's what's next. But I'm open. I'm open definitely. Absolutely, and that's how he wants us. And and yeah. this is the last thing I'm going to say before we close, y'all. Uh, well, not really the last thing, but one of the things I was listening to today, just to sync all this together for everyone. Um, uh, do you uh, Dante Pride? Do you know Dante Pride? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dante Pride and um, L'Oreal Pride have a song called Available. And when I tell you I was listening to it today, that thing hit me like a ton of bricks for real. Because really in this season, again, as you were saying, Tiffany, the Lord is calling us to be open and available. Um, and that is so key. He'll use whoever he chooses to use. And he doesn't use the ones who think that they're qualified. He equips us that are not. So um, just just have yourself open. And this, I'm talking to our people that are already saved and in the faith. Allow the Holy Spirit to work through you. Allow him to do the work in your life. And you surrender to that all, to his all, and then his will for your life. And trust me when I tell you that, it, again, the road is not going to be easy, but it is going to be a, a, a burden lifted off of you when Perfect. the burden lifter is carrying it. So again, y'all, that is our time. Tiffany, again, thank you so much for being in the building. We will see you guys back at five o'clock next Sunday, um, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure that you go on and like, you follow and share and go download um, this clip for with Tiffany so you can hear this interview at any time. That is our time for the day. You guys be blessed and have a great day. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. Bye.